Did you know that you could have a stroke to your eye? Sudden or temporary loss of your vision, including double vision or blurry vision, could be a sign that you're having a stroke, and this requires immediate medical attention. A 65-year-old woman came to her primary care doctor after an onset of temporary vision loss in her right eye yesterday. She was driving down the road and then all of a sudden it was like a curtain came over her right eye and after about five minutes, all the symptoms resolved and she was feeling back to normal. She was mentioning it to her daughter on the phone and her daughter asked her to go to the emergency department but instead, she made an appointment with her primary care doctor the next day. On neurological evaluation, she was completely normal. Her vision was fine, she had no weakness or numbness anywhere, and everything else checked out okay. So, should she be concerned? Sudden loss of your vision, even if it's only temporary, is something that could potentially be a medical emergency. A lot of you in the comments section mentioned that this patient may be having a retinal detachment. So let me explain a generalized concept of the anatomy of our eye. And I'm gonna give you a very brief overview because as you can see, the eye is pretty complicated. Basically, you have all of these structures in the front of your eye and signal or light enters the eye and then passes through the eye to get reflected on the back part of the eye called the retina. So there's a lot of structure that it passes through to get to the retina. The retina's primary job is to interpret those light signals and then translate those into electrical signals to then relay that back to the vision cortex of your brain. And these light sensitive cells on the back part of your eye are called photoreceptors and they have rods and cones. So vision can definitely get distorted anywhere along this pathway. A retinal detachment is where this layer of cells can separate from the back part of your eye and cause sudden painless onset of visual loss. But if it were to happen, it's usually not just temporary. But it is a medical emergency because if it is not reattached, it could lead to permanent vision loss. Now in our patient that I presented, she had sudden onset of visual loss in her right eye like a curtain was coming over it. And then all of a sudden in five minutes, the vision was back to normal. That type of presentation is more classic of something called amaurosis fugax. Um, what did you say? That's temporary loss of vision due to a reduction of blood flow to the retina. It usually lasts anywhere from seconds to minutes and the patients typically describe it like a curtain came over one of their eyes. It is a warning sign of an impending stroke or TIA. And that is a medical emergency. The blood flow to our eye is provided by something called the ophthalmic artery, which is a branch of our internal carotid artery. Follow me for a minute. These massive arteries in our neck are called the carotid arteries, and it goes up through our neck and then branches into many different blood vessels to supply varying parts of our brain. And one of those branches of the internal carotid artery is, you got it, the ophthalmic artery. So if you have plaque buildup or atherosclerosis of your carotid artery, a piece of that could break off and then travel through all these varying different blood vessels and potentially travel through the ophthalmic artery to temporarily obstruct flow to your eye and cause this syndrome. And if a bigger plaque were to break off of your carotid artery, it could potentially even cause a massive stroke and even death. So it's important that this type of presentation gets recognition of what could potentially be happening in the body so you can work it up and prevent a potential stroke. I wanna to try to figure out why this happened and prevent it from happening again. So if you ever have temporary vision loss in one eye, it's important to go straight to the emergency department for emergent medical evaluation and work up to figure out why it happened. There could be a variety of other reasons why this happened, but you wanna rule out something more concerning. So what would we do if this person came to the ER? Well, you got it, we do a stroke workup. One of the things that we do is work up the blood vessels to see if there is any stenosis or blockages in the carotid artery that could cause reduction of blood flow to the eye. Some of the tests that we do to evaluate that is something called a carotid artery ultrasound or potentially a CTA or MRA of the head and neck to look at all the blood vessels supplying the brain. That way we're able to look at all the blood vessels that supply the eye and make sure they're okay. And if you do have any potential blockages, that we look at that and potentially treat it. 
We also do a fundoscopic eye examination where we look in the back of the eye to see if there's any signs of something called a Holland horse plaque, which is a sign of an embolus to the back of the eye. Now, if you follow me, you know that last month we talked a lot about how the heart interacts with the brain. And with certain heart conditions, you could have clots that can generate in the heart, like from atrial fibrillation or an irregular heartbeat. And those clots can break off and travel to the brain and potentially cause a stroke. During the workup of someone with temporary vision loss, we usually want to also evaluate the heart through an echocardiogram and potentially even an extended halter monitor to make sure that there are no signs of any arrhythmias. If we are concerned of a potential stroke, an MRI of the brain could help further evaluate that. We would also evaluate for other inflammatory conditions that could cause this or even hypercoagulable conditions where the blood clots too fast. So how do we treat it? Well, it's really dependent on what you find on some of these tests. For example, on the workup, if the patient has signs of carotid artery stenosis, depending on how stenotic or how obstructed that artery is would depend on how we might treat that. If there was a huge blockage, they may have to have surgery to fix that to prevent another potential stroke. If the workup shows an arrhythmia like atrial fibrillation, we would want to put the patient on blood thinners to prevent additional clots from forming. And if they had an inflammatory condition or a hypercoagulable condition, we would also want to medically treat that. And what if we found nothing on this workup, like in this patient? Well, I did say that she's a diabetic and a smoker, so we definitely want to talk to her about nicotine cessation to minimize her risk of stroke, as well as to make sure that her hemoglobin A1C and her diabetes are under good control. We would want to check her cholesterol to make sure that that did not need to be treated as well as her blood pressure to make sure that is controlled because those are additional risk factors for stroke. And preventatively, we would probably want to start her on some type of anticoagulation like a baby aspirin plus or minus an antiplatelet drug like clopidogrel, also known as Plavix. So to summarize, I want you to remember this mnemonic called Be Fast. And these are all signs of a stroke. Only 36% of Americans recognize one of these as a sign of a stroke. So it's very important for you guys to remember this. Trouble with balance or coordination, trouble with your vision, facial droopness, weakness in a arm, leg, or both, trouble with your speech, it is time to call 911 and get to the emergency room as soon as possible. Because time is brain and your life may depend on it. On the workup for our patient, she was found to have an elevated blood pressure and an elevated A1C. So we talked to her about working on blood pressure control as well as ways to get her A1C or her blood sugars under better control. And of course, we talked to her about nicotine cessation. We wanna do everything possible to prevent her from having a stroke. And she was also started on blood thinners. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.